Welcome to the WrestleFam Talk Show. I'm Ron. I'm going to be going at it here by myself today. Uh, Ashley's a little busy with the kids, the pets, and getting ready for tomorrow. So I'm doing the AEW Dynamite Review. And first thing I want to say is I want to send my best wishes out to Ray Phoenix. He had a nasty arm break in the main event tonight. One of the nastiest arm breaks you're going to see. So he's going to be out for quite some time. The show starts off with the AEW World Championship match with Brian Danielson challenging Hangman Page for the title. They introduce the three judges for tonight. It's Mark Henry. It's the big show. And it is. I forgot who the third one was. Oh, it was Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn. I thought at first they missed the mark on that. I thought maybe they could make it more exciting of who the refs were going to be. Maybe do a few weeks before where one competitor introduces a judge of his choosing and the other of his choosing. And then maybe Tony Khan uh, picks the third one. You know, names that popped in my head would be Ric Flair, Lex Luger, uh, Bret Hart. I thought maybe bringing a big name in. But they decided to just go with three individuals that were already on their roster that weren't doing much. Uh, Jerry Lynn, I believe he helps in the back preparing for matches with the wrestlers. And, you know, Big Show and Mark Henry, they're pretty much on the announcer tables uh, for dark and elevation. The match itself was, was okay. A lot of blood, hard fought battle. I thought this match was better than their first one. I just didn't have both matches. I never really got into. I might be the, in the minority on that. The chemistry to me, I didn't really enjoy it as much as I thought I would. But uh, Adam Page ends up winning a bloody battle against Brian Danielson, so the judges were not even needed. And uh, that's how it is. It was a good win for Adam Page. So his first defense of the title that was uh, of clean victory. So then the acclaimed come on, and they are telling Darby Allen that they're going to have a wrap for next week. So we'll be on the lookout for that. And up to our, the next match, we have MJF versus the captain, Sean Dean. And before the match can even start, CM Punk runs into the ring. MJF gets out of the ring, and then CM Punk turns to Sean Dean and hits him with a go to sleep. Then they have a back and forth on the mic because Sean Dean wins by disqualification over MJF. CM, CM Punk pretty much tells him, I'm going to keep doing this until you have a match with me, which means you're going to keep losing. And if you keep losing, you're not going to have a title shot. MJF talked more crap to CM Punk, and it pretty much sets up a match for next week between CM Punk and Wardlow. The segment was all right. They're just going to prolong this until a pay-per-view or a big show. So we'll have to see how Wardlow does against CM Punk. They have Wardlow pretty high in his rankings in the AEW. But I, I, I'm not in agreement with that because he's just beating guys without any names. So it would have been better if they were going to have Wardlow kind of run through the lower level wrestlers that you actually know. Because I've never seen someone get into a top rankings just by beating jobber guys and then needing Sean Spears to help them, which doesn't make Wardlow look any better. But that's my take on that. They hype the Cody Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara rematch that's going to have a, happen on Saturday, which is the AEW Battle of the Belts. So that's an extra show this week to pay attention to. And by the way, just popped in my head, this was their first show on TBS. So I thought they would go a little bit more all out on this. 
but they didn't because afterwards we have a uh, Chris Jericho talking to two point oh. After he's talking, Daniel Garcia comes in, jumps him, then Eddie Kingston and Proud and Powerful come out to run him off. So setting up that six man tag match on I believe Friday. And then we got Adam Cole challenging Jake Atlas. If I don't sound too excited about this show, you guessed it, I I was not. He challenges Jake Atlas. He's a new wrestler from NXT, from WWE that got released, and he just debuted. I don't really care. We'll see how this match goes. And then we have Wardlow. Versus Antonio Zambrano, a job guy. He runs through him like he's been running through. Nothing exciting here. And then we get to the TBS Women Championship match. Jade Cargill versus Ruby Soho. They pretty much gave away the finish when they showed that Jade Cargill's family, her daughter and husband, is in the crowd. Because normally, except when... I think Jungle Boy had his family in the crowd. Normally, if you see that, you got a pretty good feeling that that person's going to win. So they made a little deal about that. And not to my surprise, Jay Cargill wins. Now, there might be some out there that might point to her winning to the whole Tony Khan and Big Swole controversy, but I believe Jay Cargill was going to win this anyways. So I doesn't I don't think it has anything to do with that, but you might hear that or see that if you watch maybe other shows or if you read online, maybe other commentary might say it. I don't know. I'm just guessing that some might put two to two together and think they figured it out or not. But my personal p- uh, opinion is they had nothing to do with that. She was going to win regardless, just based off of her character. This match was a little weird. And not necessarily with Jade Cargill being a fairly new wrestler. But there was just some weirdness with with, uh, Ref Aubrey. Uh, I think she's one of the best refs, but for some reason she wasn't doing any countouts when both individuals were outside the ring. Wasn't sure if there was no countout stipulation or not. And then Ruby Soho rolled out to the ring like she was hurt. And instead of doing the count because Jade Cargill was on the other side outside, she goes out and is like helping Ruby Soho, I've never seen really a rep pay that much attention to uh, an injured individual for a count out. Then she didn't do a count out or nothing. So she's down there, she's kneeling, and she's trying to help her back into the ring. Then Mercedes Martinez, the wrestler that came and attacked Thunder Rosa last week, picks the worst time to come out if you're wanting to hurt someone and help someone. She comes out right as the ref is by Ruby Soho. Just runs down to the ring like she's going to do something. And then just starts talking to Ruby Soho as Ruby Soho's on the ground. And then Thunder Rosa comes out and they start the battle and they battle to the back. The match continues. It looks like Ruby Soho's going to win. Jay Cargill keeps kicking out of every maneuver that Ruby Soho does. And then... Jay Cargill's put up on the top rope by Ruby Soho. Ruby's going to try to do a suplex. Jay Cargill blocks it, reverses it for the for the jaded off the middle rope. It looked like she thought about going to the top rope, but she thought better of it, and I think that was a good call. And uh, she hit the jaded, and is the new TBS Women's Champion. So I'm happy for her. I know Ashley and I have been saying we expect big things from her since the beginning of our show here and so here's the beginning part here's the the first step of jay cargill her first championship i like that they talked about chris statlander and layla hirsch from dark i like that they're doing a lot of different women rivalries and storylines i like that they're doing it on their youtube channel and not just the main shows And here's another example of the women division getting a lot of time. A one-on-one sit-down with Serena Deeb. She did a great job. 
talking about her feud with Hikaru Shida. Even though I'm not interested, it was still well done. And I hope Serena Deeb can come out of this feud quickly and move on to something else because those are two wrestlers I just don't want to see wrestle again. They've wrestled three times already. I'm over it. I know it's part of the storyline. It's more of an in-ring storyline of who's better. But I hope Serena Deeb can break away from this and move up into something a little bit more important. Then we have Malachi Black versus Brian Pillman Jr. Malachi Black comes out first, and then Brian Pillman comes out with Julia Hart. She's wearing a patch because weeks ago Malachi Black sprayed the mist into her eyes. Basic match here. Uh, Brian Pillman messes up at the end as he tries to do a springboard clothesline. He falls down, kind of trips over the ropes, and Malachi Black hits him with his finisher, the Black Mass. Picks up the victory, exits the ring. Then he thinks about it for a second. He's going to come back into the ring, and that's when the Lucha Brothers come out. And they come down the aisle, and then the darkness hits. They turn the lights off, and now Malachi Black and the Lucha Brothers have switched positions. Now Malachi Black is outside, and the Lucha Brothers are inside. I did not like that. Because if Malachi Black is the one that's supposed to be mysterious and able to move to different places when the lights go out, you've now showed me that the Lucha Brothers also have that power. So if they swapped places, you know, I wish like the Lucha Brothers would have acted like, how the heck did I get here? That would have been a better, but they were just looking on like nothing was wrong. So I... I I would like to see that just stick with Malachi Black. He's the only one that has that power. But he picked up the win, and it pretty much set up for foreshadowing for the main event because I'm thinking, okay, they're going to do something with the main event between Malachi Black and the uh, Lucha Brothers. What was weird about this is the Lucha Brothers came out, and then their match was going to be the next match if you're going to do something like that when you're going to have like your main event wrestlers come out, have them come out a little bit earlier in the show, you could have obviously switched the Malachi Black Brian Pillman Jr. match for either the MJF segment with a jobber or Wardlow with a jobber. You know, mix it up where the Lucha Brothers didn't just come out because when you do that, the live crowd has already seen them. So the explosion of when they come out. It's not going to be the same if I just saw them five minutes ago and now they're going to come out for their match. But prior to them coming out for their match, we have a little scuffle in the back. Britt Baker and her group jump Ruby Soho and Riho comes in for the save. So that's going to set up a tag team match of Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter versus Ruby Soho and Riho before the title match that's on Saturday between Riho and Britt Baker. So the tag match is going to happen on Friday. Aaron Solo has a message for Hook. I found that interesting that Aaron Solo and QT Marshall would be sending a message to Hook because they're bad guys, and Hook is supposedly being a bad guy. So is this a turn for Hook to being a good guy? And I kind of talked about it in some of my ideas as maybe – you know, Taz may be turning good with Hook, and that could break up Team Taz and send them all on their different ways. But maybe this is just a great bad guy versus bad guy match. So that's going to be his next opponent is Aaron Solo for Hook, who is Taz's son. Now the championship match hits. Jurassic Express and the Lucha Brothers. They had a tough time getting it going. A lot of trying to do different moves. There were some great moves in it. Kind of got slow started. Really didn't catch their groove. Near the end, Christian chases the Lucha Brothers manager away, and he had set up a table, Lucha Brothers manager, and Christian chases him away, and that's when the spot happens where Luchasaurus choke slams Ray Phoenix through the table. He tries to brace himself, and his left arm bends back for a nasty arm break. Soon after that, 
They, the Jurassic Express, pin Pentagon beat them. They're the new tag team champions. I was shocked. I did not expect the, uh, the Jurassic Express to win this match. I'm guessing they did this because it's the first AEW on TBS, and maybe they were going to plan something with the Lucha Brothers and Malachi Black and wanted to get the titles off of them to do that. Well, they're going to have to change their plans even more because that arm break is going to keep Ray Phoenix out for quite some time. I'm no doctor, and it, I, I'm surprised sometimes they come back real quick, but this one's going to be months on in. Really bad break. So they have the titles on the Jurassic Express, and then all the top bad guy teams come out onto the stage. The show all are watching Jurassic Express, and they're after them. And then they started just showing random wrestlers. Malachi Black's in the in a seat in the crowd. Chris Jericho's in a seat. I believe Santana, they showed him. They showed, I think it was Ortiz. They were just all kept moving the camera all to the other wrestlers. I wasn't sure if maybe they had something else set up with the Lucha Brothers and Jurassic Express after the match. And with that arm break, now they're like, okay, let's go ahead and just start scanning the crowd, showing different teams, things of that nature. Because Chris Jericho didn't even look like he knew he was going to be on camera. And Malachi Black was supposed to be mysterious because the lights went off during the match of the Lucha Brothers. So I'm th sitting there thinking, oh, you know, is he coming back out? Is he debuting a team that is going to fight the Lucha Brothers on his behalf? But none of that happened. And there he is in the crowd. So I don't know if they were supposed to show him. But it was just a bad scene. I felt really bad about Phoenix getting injured. And but that's a bad way to end the show. So all in all, it has to go down as one of the worst AEW dynamites I've ever watched. Um, part of it is just the matches itself. Things just not going right. But the main reason is because of Ray Phoenix breaking his arm. So it's not a good show. It's a show I don't even want to remember, to be honest with you. But that was a quick AEW dynamite review. No funny jabs, no back and forth with Ashley, just right to the point. Very sour note tonight. So I hope Ray Phoenix comes back stronger than ever. And uh, we'll see you next time.